all right so global is going to be getting the new game mode labyrinth which is all the way at the bottom right here as you can see now i want to talk about some misconceptions about the labyrinth that a lot of people are probably confused about and that is a lot of people would be like yo is the labyrinth based upon you know your box your box cc and about the um what's it called the constellation does that affect the labyrinth when you're playing this and no it, that does not affect anything like that now there is another misconception that a lot of people do have um with the labyrinth and probably a lot of youtubers don't really admit it and that is it kind of is based on your box technically in a way um because if you check on the gc database real quick um uh, right here if you go scroll all the way to the bottom you can see when you're talking about the labyrinth it says like 30 ap per entry max four units characters will all start at level one stats you need the and then right here in parentheses right here you need to own the character the unique skill is unlocked and that is kind of why you can probably say like yo this is kind of sucky because now you have to own the character to be able to uh acquire them randomly through the labyrinth which is kind of sucky in a way and it kind of does affect the gameplay with the labyrinth because there is a certain character that probably most people don't really have that can make the labyrinth pretty easily um so yeah we're, as i'm gonna be discussing the labyrinth i will be talking about that character but yeah make sure you guys have these characters um again it's very unfortunate that the labyrinth is kind of like in a way play to win because you need a character to be able to unlock it through the labyrinth but yeah all right so we're going to go into the labyrinth right here with the 30 ap you just want to click on it real quick go to okay now the labyrinth it's a pretty fun game mode like i really enjoyed playing this now there's a lot of kind of mechanics that you got to understand when going through the, the, the um, labyrinth now you want to try to look at the path that you're going through because there's a lot of towers right here that is going to be a lot useful um throughout the gameplay of the labyrinth which i will be discussing later in the video but the first we want to talk about what characters are you going to get you're going to get level one type of characters now the best characters that are good for level ones are usually going to probably be like the bonds maybe elizabeth and probably deanne now the best one in my opinion is going to be this bond right here the green brawler bond that's because he has the passive where pretty much uh every turn he's going to recover 20 percent of his diminished hp so you want to try to click this man get this man uh other characters that are pretty good are like counter meliotis um point shop deanne and you're going to get these type of four characters sometimes it's like basically like have a theme with these type of characters so you know you're gonna get on you're gonna get the elizabeth you're gonna get melios and you're also gonna get deanne and even if you try to reset it you're gonna get these type of characters and just probably like a different attribute of course it's gonna be a basic one so don't think you're gonna get like the festival trade meliotis first on the first run all right don't think that at all so you want to get this man um collect them now again there is a trick to pretty much making it a lot easier that i mentioned um early in the video and that is you want to try on this third slot right here you can see with the helmet the hemp not the helmet the crown point up right here is that you want to try to pull for summer merlin now unfortunately you have to own the character to get summer merlin so the other other choice is probably red gother because attack seal is just super super strong if you don't know if you're play pvp and you face some really she pretty much seals most of the characters that are used in pvp and in the game with attack seal and the same goes for these enemies that you might see right here which makes it a lot easier to progress through the past whichever way you want to go because you're able to attack seal ult control and all that good stuff so she makes it a lot easier to play against the labyrinth oh man i clicked out <laughs> um so as you can be seeing throughout the video i'm gonna be explaining this with summer merlin again just usually the character you want to try to reroll for all right so we have defeated the first stage now what i usually like to go for is going to be the super awakening or the um ult level i usually go for super awakening and then you want to see if you get some merlin because i did not get some merlin um as you can see right here you can see red red merlin gother fat king 
and you also got um Asknor. because i didn't get summer rolling what i'm going to do is re-roll by just resetting the game by clicking on the bottom right here and it's pressing okay now again you can only get merlin if you own the character if you don't have merlin my best option is going to probably be red gother because red gother also had an attack still it's just a lot um slower because with red gother you have to get a rank up or a merge to get that attack still and you also have trouble o controlling at the same time so again you want to try to get summer merlin but if not just use red gother and he works a little bit better as well but yeah you want to re-roll all that good stuff re-rolling will start you all the way back to the beginning but because you only need to complete one stage it's kind of very fast and quick and you're gonna have different characters again right here again we got green brawler bond again but we got blue demon melios and coin shop yeah now again green brawler bond is the better one so you go back to him and then you just keep doing that till you at the end on the third one which is right here you get some merlin but again i'm gonna keep repeating this and that is you must own the character for you to be able to get it if you do not have summer merlin in your box right now then your best option is to try to go for red gother now this is just my opinion you can do whatever you want to but now for each part there is the last stage where you're going to be facing off against a boss at the very end with the skull and it's like three parts well technically four but i probably won't discuss the fourth one um at the end because you only need to worry about the three three of the bosses to get the last rewards but there is like a fourth part where you can pretty much extend further to completing the labyrinth which is extremely hard at the, the fourth one but at the end you have on the first one you're going to be facing off against the boss with this counter meliotis at the very very end he's going to be pretty tanky very strong so you want to make sure you as you building up your characters that you focus on your stats um your levels and all that good stuff so you won't be out cc because usually you want to try to have four characters at the end so you don't get out cc so you can go first now the second one is going to be droll drolls is going to be super strong and as you're going to be progressing through you're going to realize that it's going to be very hard to attack seal these characters so what you want to do is you want to try to uh, have your ultimate ready to pretty much nuke these bosses and the final one is going to be berserk mode meliodas where he has like that blank stare face going on um and he is very very powerful he kind of got like a salt mode meliodas passive um in a way and he hits like a truck <laughs> like it's crazy like he hits super super hard so you want to make sure again that you have your characters really really built up when dealing with these bosses now i wanted to talk about the things that you might see as you're going to be progressing through the labyrinth like these towers that you might come across one is like a random chest that has a panel that will randomly appear um you have a normal battle you have a random battle which is going to be like like mobs that are super strong you have choir slash switch heroes which is where you can get different types of heroes as you progress through the labyrinth you have the revive function where you get to revive a fallen hero you have the underground labyrinth shot where you can might purchase multiple effects that are the same thing as these for um the currency you have enhanced hero which will boost the level of your hero by plus 10 you have awaken and super awakening which will awaken your character with plus two stars you have hit enhanced ultimate move which brings it up by one you have hp recovery which heals the um heroes by 30 percent of max hp and then you have the final which i showed you before which is the boss battle now a lot of people want to know like what do i sh what should i look for when going throughout the um the labyrinth now with the labyrinth you always want to try to like look it through on like which what kind of path you could potentially go through um as you progressing because it's all going to be dependent on your characters right because you might have some moments where you might have your character be falling or you might feel like your characters are on the level or stuff like that so you want to progress pretty much um the best as you can especially if you unlock good passives now you always want to try to focus on the passives for yourself like you can see with these random icons right up here that this is going to allow you to get a certain passive and some of these passives are really really good you always want to try to follow what your passives say um and follow with your team because that's gonna that's kind of gonna boost your team up pretty further 
and allow you to complete some of these bosses a lot easier right so again usually what i do is this i go for like the um super awakening and ult level and that's because with the go after you go after these bosses and stuff like that you'll be able to get levels from the bosses now the other thing you can get is super awakening in these passives right the passives these ult level you can't get that from facing off against these bosses so you want to try to as you're progressing through build up your awakening and build up your level because the awakening will give you substats along as base stats as well and you also can bring up your ultimate level which is going to be very good at defeating higher level bosses at the end because you will need to use your ultimates uh it's kind of like a given unfortunately usually don't want to try to waste your slots on trying to like healing up and reviving you want to try to make sure that your characters are alive for the most part most of the time that's why people will use like summer merle and attack and rid of gother because you get the attack still pretty much allowing you to free yourself from getting hit and taking damage or needing to revive a hero so you can use that extra slot to either super waking uh go for ult levels or you know get another hero All right, so we're gonna be showing you my path as I was progressing through um, the second stage. It's the stage that you do after defeating Captain Meliodas. Again, some of the things are a little bit tricky um, to understand. Now you're probably wondering why, like, why I'm really, why did you gain that gauge right there? It's because I have a passive going on, which is probably one of the better passes you can get through the labyrinth. Where depending on it, your um, this one is like if you have different race on the field, you gain three gauge. Now there's another one where if you have different attributes you also gain three gauge that one is also works but this is the one with, with the race that's why you see i gained three gauge now again i was just lucky enough to actually get this passive um through the captain meliotis part of the part of the um labyrinth which means you can get an early game if you need to which is fire and i chose i end up with this type of team featuring liz and bond again i'm using different races because i want to try to play off of my own passive again focusing on what passive you have is going to be great for team building you always want to team build based on your passives because you can get extra stats um you can get extra gauge as you can see right there and you also want to try to read your passive as much as you want to as much as possible make sure it really aligns well with you like just because a passive is ssr doesn't mean it's going to be best for you you always want to just go for things that will focus on your passive like right here i'm going for sr1 because it fits my team very very well because i want to try to go for a different type of races all right so this one i'm in a selection now it's either i go for evililia glocks um matrona or dreyfus now the good thing about this is for me i have to try to go for different races so usually characters i want to try to go for is going to be matrona or maybe glocks i mean unless i throw bond in the back I really don't want to try to have like the same passes. So what I'm probably going to go for is Matrona because Matrona feel like she's going to be a very good throwaway type of character because not only does she have a taunt, but she also like, can heal and she allows me to just like have all the attention from Droll attacks going to her because honestly guys, Droll hits so hard. Like he's going to take out one of your characters if you're playing this. And as you can see, I'm just looking through the paths. It's very nice to try to look for the path. So you know like what you want to try to go for especially if you're going to see one of these shops so you know like yo i don't need super awakening because um there's a whole bunch of passive going for super awakening so i can just go for that so i don't need to buy in a shop or anything like that so i end up just going for old level which means i'm going for level four again i try to make it as fast as possible um as I, as i'm going through this again i'm pretty much just gonna be looking through my passive and stuff like that i think i was just reading right here so i'm just gonna fast forward a little bit <laughs> yeah i think i was like reading because labyrinth was interesting but you know it got a little boring you feel me because i was just because i was just having so much fun just playing through the labyrinth the entire time but you know i, I just did something on the side just so i don't get too bored again guys attack so is super super strong as you see only one character did an attack that's why i said yo you want to try to go for um an attack seal type of unit either being for merlin or red gother because she just she just makes it so easy i just hated that the fact that you have to have the character before you be able to use it now this one you have green dairy and then droll 
Um, I try to see if I can use the reset function, which you can see right there is the 10 selection for the 10 currency. Uh, it's usually for you to reset the characters that are there. Um, I try to use that, but I don't know why, but for some reason it just went back to the same characters, uh, which just sucked. Like I was going to click it again too, to see like, was I just tripping off? tripping out or something like that and like so i just went for the super awakening because that really made me upset because i was literally hoping for like red deer area because red deer area is very good at destroying droll because you get to like one shot droll with red deer area's um ultimate that's why i was trying to go for her but it's fine uh i'll just play with matrona again matrona is going to be like my bait character that i would probably just throw away because it, you can get characters very early on um through the labyrinth so it's not that i care about matrona as much as i should you feel me uh, especially because after droll you get the chance to get like festivals and stuff after this and goddesses so after if you droll you get a chance to get a goddess character um which is cool like i've seen some people get i I've, I've gotten like lit like liz before um who else did i also try to get i seen people get like red tarmiel afterwards so you're getting like a goddess character after this, usually. But not after this, but you know, after Droll, after you defeat Droll. So again, I'm just going through the paths. Um, leveling is probably the best thing I could do right there because I didn't need to heal or anything like that. So I'm just progressing through it regularly. Again, I chose the right path because that felt like it, it was more beneficial to me because I didn't really need any other passive at the moment because I got one of the best ones, which is the old gauge one, which is where if you have different races on the field, pretty much you gain three gauge, which makes it a lot easier to ult. As you can see, like I'm just going through it quickly. Now, well, I got it fast forward, you feel me? So, you know, it's not as quick uh, cause I was doing a lot of thinking on my paths I should take. I think I just go for Super Awakening because I don't need old level at this point. Again, guys, you know, it's always best to um know what you want to go for. I feel like leveling Super Awakening and um you know old level is probably the, the things you want to go for, especially because depending on your old level, it makes it easier to defeat the last boss or the third boss, which is Berserk Mode with Meliodas, which is gonna be after you defeat Drill right here. So I either was like you know leveling or awakening. I think I just choose awakening, or do I choose? Oh, I chose leveling. Oh yeah, because I wanted the UR. Yeah, so I just went for leveling to UR my characters real quick. I forgot I chose leveling. <laughs> oh yeah, because I felt like I was already good and on like super awakening at this point. Because again, you have so many options of, like getting awakening. And as you can see right there, I do not tax so guys. So you can see attack selling freezing and stuff like that gets a little bit outdated uh, when you're going against these bosses i think only meliodas you can like attack so i think if i'm not mistaken but he has like a counter but um yeah you always want to make sure you have your ultimate that's why i say it's best to have your ultimate pretty high for for a situation like this where you end up getting probably nuke probably i freaking droll because this man you see the way how much damage he's doing a freaking uh matrona and then ultimate hit like a truck. All right. So I was literally debating if I should heal up or not. Um, I think I just go for this. I want to remove his buffs as much as possible. So he doesn't do insane amount of damage. Because I'm pretty sure he still has droll passive. Right. So um, yeah, I did not want to let have droll have so many passives going on for himself. As you see right there, um, I'm pretty much going to heal. And then I attack. And after this, it should be kind of good. Again, Matrona was just a throwaway character to begin with. Because like I said before, after this, I'm going to have a chance to get the goddess character. Um, I think I have to face like one like regular enemy first though. Yeah, I get, I'm get. i probably going to go for ult level. Oh, okay. So I have to go for um the middle boss, which is going to be like a, a name boss. Let's let's call those name bosses. You feel me? <laughs> the the question might give, give you a name boss and also give you a passive. So I'm about to go to the name bosses or I guess random passive. Wait, is it like a name boss? Nah, nah, nah. This not this one. I'm thinking of another one where you can have like regular characters. Um, 
from the game. I think it's after this one where you get like name bosses. This is just the one where you get like a normal passive and stuff like that. So I'm pretty much healing, ulting. I don't know why I ulted that soon, but it's fine. Oh, I want to get full HP. That's why. I was like, why did I ult it so soon? That's why it's very good that I went for different types of, of characters or races. Now, I just chose the last one, which is the, I get like 10% crit defense or something like that. Again, it didn't really matter to me because I already had one of the best passive. Now you can see right there, I got Margaret, Hawk Oslo, Easton, and Deanne. Now, you're probably gonna see me try to go for the resets. I don't know what it is, but every time I use the reset function, I would literally just like get the same characters back to back. And that's because I was a little bit curious on what characters I would acquire. I was seeing if I would probably get like a different DN, but as you can see, I end up with the same characters after wasting my currency, which made me upset. <laughs> I don't know if it's a bug or I just got to reroll the same things over and over, but I did that stuff happened to me twice. So I just chose Margaret. Um, yeah, I just placed Matrona and I put Liz in the back because I, because of my passive. Remember, guys, I need different races um, to gain that three gauge. So that's why I throw Liz in the back. And I just go for Awakening. Now I'm at SA4. Again, I've had a chance to probably get another passive right here. Now, this one is okay. This is one where it's the name boss because um, it's a rook. You feel me? I know, I know my chest. You feel me? Um, again, this one's going to be super easy because you get the attack so long. Again, guys, attack still is just super strong on this. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Attack still is just too good. You ever, you ever face a you ever face a summer Merlin PvP? You ask yourself, like, why? Why does attack still exist? This is why. And that was just easy peasy. Because they couldn't do anything. Now we doing this again where. We're going for Escanor. Now, this is where you get like a festival. And I chose Escanor because why not? Especially because I have the um, Death Ultimate, which is very good against Berserk Mode Meliodas because he does get like a revive. So you want to have that for yourself. All right. So I'm probably just going to go through the paths and stuff like that. Like you guys understand already like wh what I'm doing right here. I'm just pretty much going through it. I mean, you can fast forward this, you know, but you got, you already figure out like what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm just trying to go through the boss as quickly as possible. I feel like I'm going too fast with it. I'm not too fast, but you know, uh, too slow with it. So I go for the six, six right here, I think. And then on the last one, I just go for the SA six. I don't really need the leveling. I feel like SA six would be a lot better. Like, let's go to the freaking nitty gritty. You feel me? Like, let's go to, uh, <laughs> Meliodas. Now this Meliodas, he hits extremely hard, which is why I love that I got the old gauge passive, where pretty much I get to just ult. But he has cool animation. Uh, this Berserk Mode Meliodas. I wish he was an actual character in the game. And yes, guys, Berserk Mode Meliodas will take off a character. Now I'm gonna be let you guys know right now. This Berserk Mode Meliodas has a Soul Mode Meliodas passive. So every time you attack him. You're gonna get the debuff, defense down debuff, and he's gonna gain buffs as well. That's why it's best to try to go for your ultimates against this guy. You can see right, you saw right there, he gained like a pass, he gained like a buff. And I just had Eskinor just ult him to death. And that's pretty much easy peasy on how I defeated um the Labyrinth. Again, Labyrinth is fun but hard in a way you know because with labyrinth you have to have the characters unfortunately um which i'm pretty sure not that many people really got like summer merlin hopefully you do so you'll be able to reroll for him for her but other than that man in my opinion labyrinth is probably one of the most fun game modes that i ever played because it's very strategic um hopefully it, it resets like i believe they say like every month it re resets so this reward is going to be every month, so hopefully you guys be able to defeat it. Again, I want to know what kind of strategy you come up with. Again, you don't have to do this strategy, what I did with Summer Merlin. Again, you can use some Red Gother or use whatever characters you want to use. I've seen plenty of people defeating uh, Melius with like weird other strats. Like, I've seen like Death Pierce and stuff. It all depends on you guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe again. And yeah, um... 
Oh man, I was supposed to talk about the fourth part. I mean, the fourth part isn't really that interesting. It's super hard. But other than that, man, hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, this really guys, I'm out. Peace.